tying up loose ends oh, okay. and making some better connections out there. And like I said, on Cleveland, there are some problems and everything in that area. And obviously, that's an area, anytime we can add hybrids on that side of uh, Dawson County, we need everyone that we can get. We, um, our new station we have out there, will we have a hydrant hookup close to that station? No, sir. Not, not anywhere close. Closest one, like I think, we actually uh, uh, rode this one three three. days ago. I think it's 2.6 miles. It's back to Elliott family. And there's been a lot of discussion about that. Um, I'm sure there'll be I'm sure you want to think out there, but yes. <laughs> I'm trying not to mention the words. Water tanks, excuse me. <laughs> OVER. What was the, I know when we started talking about hydrants, what was the total amount per, did we, what was that total amount? It seems like we negotiated that last year, year before last, to a fixed amount of about yeah. 37,500 or something. I don't have the actual number. <coughs> this uh, is coming out about 33, 33, 7. Somewhere that's well, about 3400 <coughs> Yeah, about 3400 dollars and change. But we're not getting charged for the T's. Correct. But what we have to remember is if we elect not to put hydrants in this area now, Edelwalk goes ahead and drops the T connection. Mm -hmm. When we go back and cap it, you turn around and I think that price is 5400 mm -hmm. so Yeah, yeah. yeah. correct. Yeah. Yeah, they have to dig it back up. Mm -hmm. Other questions for Dan? Does that help any of the ISO ratings up there on Cleveland? Right? Because it's yeah, in, 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 in the pocket right now. It's anytime easy. we add hybrids, it increases because ISO looks at station location right. and then hydro location. So does that get that Cleveland right out of the 10? That area? Yes, sir. Really? Okay. That's pretty good. I think that's the dinner five mile radius of the station. station one, I believe, isn't it? It's, it's right it be a road miles is oh. critical and I'd have to I would have to go back and some of that is very close. I know some of that over there on Gold Mine and some of those other places you can set other station will back that up from there. Mm -hmm. that's cool. yeah. Bring that back in, yeah. That's correct. And they put one on the other line. It's brand new out there. Just recently. Brand new five hundred. Just recently. Really? Is it the end of it, or is it in the middle? Or kind of. In the middle, it's on the gravel part. They just did it. I don't know if it was something to test or blow out or something. But they just put it. Other questions. And you're pulling it out of fund balance. That's the proposal. What, Ms. Vicki? I had put a note at the bottom of the agenda request to um, potentially take that out of the contingency line. Okay. <coughs> All right. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, sir. Next up, we have a presentation request for memorandum of understanding with the Georgia Mercy Management Agency concerning New Grants Management System. Dan. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Uh, this one's really kind of a formality. Uh, GEMA is swapping over to a a new process, it's a grant portal called EMA Grants. And so all grants that you have through GEMA will now go to this portal. So GEMA submitted the uh, memorandum of understanding um, and it, for us to be able to access it and to continue with grants, <coughs> we'll have to you know, have the MLU uh, in place to be able to satisfy that. There's no current grant that we're asking for, we're really just asking the board to move on the MOU as quickly as we possibly can because we do have several grant applications coming up and we just don't want to find ourselves getting behind on those. Is it the same for everybody? Yes, ma'am. All 159 counties, the EMA directors have to do this. Okay. So ours is not different. No, ma'am. Well, I guess that's a no brainer and no choice. <laughs> you want the money. You want the money. Well, well you I have want the money. money. You want the money. That's it. Yeah, right. Do we need to bet on that? 
You, you can. I mean, we, we don't currently have a grant that's coming up right now, but our next one is our EMPG grant. It'll be good on the 19th, though. That'll be coming any day now. They'll release it any day. We, when we vote on that on the 19th, it'll we'll be good? I think so, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. Yes, thank you. Presentation of IFB number 332-19, Construction Services for the Senior Services Center, Community Development Block Grant, Public Works Director David McKee, and Senior Services Director Don Cook. David, I guess you're starting your standing. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, thank you uh, for the opportunity. Uh, possibly before this is over with, we will hear from several of us. Um, it's our pleasure to bring before you the construction contract uh, for the Senior Services building. I know we have been back before this board on a number of different occasions over the last uh, really two years about this, this very project. If you recall, in 2017, we received a, a donation from the Pauline Ivy Trust, um, roughly uh, excuse me, roughly $945,000. Um, we subsequently applied for a grant through DCA, uh, CDBG Block Grant, um, and we were awarded $750,000 for that. Um, we released the, the uh, bid for construction services on April 11th. Um, we received those bids back for the construction services, and you'll recall that was also the <coughs> civil work that Vertical Earth is currently under contract and is currently moving all the site work and everything for that. And as part of that project, there's also the pavilion, the, the field work, and everything else. What we're bringing before you today is the actual construction, the general contracting of the senior center building itself. Um, as uh, for the past, uh, recall, uh, recall a month or so ago, the question was asked about this, this particular contract. It was over budget. For the past three months, um, I don't want to take very much credit for it, Brian and Dawn and, and James and everybody spent a, a lot of time working back and forth with both the architect, um, the, the proposed general contractor that we have here, um, and then amongst staff trying to value engineer and, and get the best product that we can without um, losing the level of service that we have um, proposed and that we have uh, extended to DCA and our CDBG bot grant. Um, we believe that, that what we are presenting uh, today does just that. Um, we do have a presentation um, that we'll go, I'll go through real quickly. I think I hit some of those, uh, some of those highlights. Um, Okay. One of the biggest cons uh, issues, I know the question always comes up, or not issues, but the question always comes up, um, we bid this according to policy and we received three bids from three different general contractors. One of the questions always comes up, why did we only receive three general contractors? Um, one is the, is the market. The market is driving several different issues here. One is the cost. Um, the, the, that's what's driving the cost, the increase in cost. And number two, I think one of the, the driving uh, factors here is the, the CDBG grant itself. There is a ton of paperwork. There's probably people behind me shaking their head. You can only imagine what uh, federal paperwork is required for this, not just on our end, but for the architect, the designers, as well as the general contractors. They're going to have to submit payment records and a lot more records than is required of a normal general contractor. So that could also be um, it, uh, adding to the increased cost. I cannot say that for a fact, but that, that could, I assume that's, uh, that's what it, that some of that is. What you see here on the screen is just some of the special terms and conditions that's required of that CDBG block grant. And again, I am not an expert of that. There are uh, folks that are here that could talk to us uh, more specifically about those requirements, but those are just some of those requirements that we have to follow for that. Some of the typical construction or scope of services as it related to this, the original plan was an 8,260 square foot building, um, stone and masonry, a lot of what you see at the pool house um, and the addition of the renovation of the gym out there. So uh, without going into a lot of detail about every bit of this, we that's in general what we're trying to do is keep that same theme throughout the entire park. So that when you drive through the park, all the buildings look similar, everything looks similar. One thing to note that was not part of the, it, it is not part of the general contractor scope is the furniture fixtures and equipment. Uh, furniture is not included in this price that we're, we're discussing tonight. 
we look at some of the space usage and programming and, and if, if individual programming and questions about the programs itself and how they'll be used on is certainly here to answer that. But uh, large multi-purpose space, um, kitchen, game room, office space, um, uh, bathroom facilities, lobby, um, nurse's office, and then the respite room. Uh, I think we've, uh, hopefully everybody had the opportunity to go through some of the, the programs that Don's had out there, so we'll have that, that room available. Um, in this new facility. I'm going to go back for just a second because I think I skipped over something that that I think is important and has been a topic of question before. Um, the current building will maintain um, and, and still be used by senior services and they, they could keep its current name the Margin Weaver Senior Center. That's That's been a topic of, of certainly a question um, and I want to make sure that publicly that we've addressed that. And then the new building would be named the Paul and Stevens Ivy Center Senior Life um, Center. So uh, I did. I didn't want to just go right through that without uh, hitting that high note as well. Okay. So the offers that we received, we see three different offers as we talked about earlier: diversified construction of, of Georgia, Scrubs and Grizzle Contracting, and then Carol Daniel Construction Company. You can see the range in value of those ranging from 2.2 2, 2 million um, up to 2.7 million dollars. Um, and and the, what, what you see appears to me in red here is, is diversified contracting. And we'll talk a little bit more about diversified. And, and I talked a little bit about the value engineering over the last three months the staff has done. And, and we work directly with diversified <coughs> contracting, um, the architect and staff in trying to make this number fit without cutting specific services um, that we uh, projected to offer. So now a little bit about the reduced scope um, and, and what we've done. Off, off the cuff, we went from $2,242,000 to the negotiated contract total cost is $1,969,853. Um, again, what that cost does not include is the furniture. Um, a little bit about what was cut, what was, uh, um, what those scope uh, changes were is right there below. There was a staff conference room um, that was, if you recall, it was sort of an octag octagon shape um, off the front corner of the building. Uh, that was removed, reducing the square footage of the building. Uh, we removed the, the metal roofing and went to architectural shingles. Um, there again, that's just uh, what we were looking at is not necessarily items that was four or $500. We were trying to look at big ticket items. Um, we removed the canopy from the breezeway. Uh, that was a breezeway, canopy breezeway cover that went from the existing senior center over to the new senior center. Um, the option is still there. We've looked at long term, and I think Dawn may have addressed some of that in your budget, in your uh, um, current budget that, that we just presented. Um, there are some other options, and we've left that option and tying those two in together. We still have that ability. The doors are still there. The sidewalk's still there. Everything's still there, just not to cover. Um, at some point in time, the way this is going to be built, it could be added. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. We removed the second sidewalk closer to the road. That was just two sidewalks, um, duplicate of, of sidewalks there. So, again, we looked at every option there. Uh, Cover the entire building with hardy plank instead of a brick and, and the stone facade. So we've done some additional hardy plank. It's still a, a non-combustible material, but it's it's not uh, not the brick. That was a fairly substantial cost there. Um, in the multi-purpose room, there was a, a vaulted ceiling essentially in the multi-purpose room, and it was more architectural. There was some windows up in the vault. Um, it, it was as much aesthetic as it was uh, open feel, open air as anything else. Um, but that was removed. Um, the ceiling height matches everything else. We adjusted the interior doors um, from a commercial grade to a residential grade. I don't want you to think that that is um, cheap doors, that they're going to get bumped and a hole be knocked into them. They are still comparable doors. It's just a, a lower grade door uh, than, than what was originally spec. Um, windows, for example, vinyl to high quality PVC. There again, we're still talking about it. A 20 or 30 year product and, and we're not talking about something that's, that's going to become an issue um, again flooring countertops equipment that was uh, kitchen equipment and storage cabinets that's very fairly routine mill work that was that was adjusted uh, to be comparable and then i just briefly talked about that 
transom that was in the multi-use room that was in that vaulted ceiling area. Let some natural light in. We still have windows for natural light in that multi-use room. It just removed those uh, transom glazing above the uh, above the, the vault. You can see a, a rendering of the building there. So staff's recommendation is that we, we enter a contract uh, with diversified construction for the negotiated uh, cost. Um, there is the, the remainder of the original fund <coughs> being the donation funds and the CDBG funds. There is an overage of $501,556. Um, th this right here says the board's discretion. Uh, I believe Vicki and uh, Dave and, and I have all had a, a lot of general discussion about where does that additional money come from. Um, what our recommendation is, we don't have to make that decision today. Uh, we will not need that additional money for that contract until July or August or even September of next year. So we will have this year's audited numbers completed and we will have a number of different options that we can do the additional monies from. One being fund balance, yeah. fund balance <coughs> following this year's audited numbers. Number two, the money could be borrowed. Um, and that's our options at that time. Uh, what we're going to continue to do through this process is save every dollar we can. So that, that when we get to that June, July point of next year, um, we will then come back before the board and make a recommendation of how we finish funding that. Um, and really what that boils down to is if we elect at this point to borrow the money, it's difficult to get lenders to make that decision to borrow money a year out from today. And we wouldn't use that money, so we don't want to certainly don't want to make payments on something we wouldn't utilize until that point. So um, there is some additional expenditures there. If it's the board's discretion, um, we can add into this the the furniture. Um, but again, I think we'll we'll bring that before the board at, at, the, at a later time when we have the the accurate numbers for that. Um, and then you'll also know as part of this, there's no contingency um, for unforeseen conditions um, here. And I would request that the board uh, approve this and approve up to a $10,000 contingency. $10,000 is not very much in the grand scheme of things for this, but that will give us some something without having to come back to this board for every $500 overage or $1,000 overage. And I'll attempt to answer any questions as will our team that's here with me. Questions for David? Um, <coughs> If we go down the path of borrowing, there's, there's, um, I think the response, there's responsible ways to borrow money, and this is an example, I think, where it does make sense because we're getting so much in grant money and so much in donation money to be able to move forward. The thing that, and I'm looking for feedback, is if, if we take off a, if we're going to borrow and pay it back, potentially with splash that's coming up, and, you know, we, we renegotiate that next year and potentially add it into that. Are we shooting ourselves short knowing that we're probably got a 12 month gap if we're having to borrow to get it back in this squash on a metal roof versus asphalt shingles? As we know, asphalt shingles are not going to last, from, my, from what I understand, nearly as long as a roof would. That's one of my questions. And the other one is the, the breezeway not being covered. Does that limit our ability to utilize? both buildings efficient, efficiently when there is weather. And, and so the other parts <coughs> that you value engineered out, I think, are, are, are very valid and good ways to cut where we won't see an impact in services or longevity, potentially, of the, the structure itself, other than the metal roof, potentially, and that covered breezeway. So I, I guess what I'm saying is if we go down the path of potentially borrowing it, I'm not adverse to going ahead and including those back in if it's going to give us a longer life of the roof and it's going to give us more usability of the facility itself with the breezeway being covered. What's the difference in the cost of, now I like the look of the shingles better. I don't, I don't which last summer. Do you know what's the difference in the life of a shingle? And a the, the shingle roof is proposed as a 25 year product. We all know. And so what about, I mean the tin, sometimes they get to looking terrible. Metal. It's a commercial metal, commercial and the difference was fifty-two thousand dollars between metal and shingles. Mm -hmm. And as you, we were just, we were at two point two million. We were just trying to figure out ways to cut costs to bring to present it to the board of commissioners. But 
I personally would prefer metal. It is long term. It lasts a lot longer. And with a commercial metal, it tends to fade less than you would a residential metal. So that's why we went with uh, shingle. But, but how long? You said the other was 25. I'm just guessing out loud. It's, it, the shingles are supposed to be guaranteed 20 to 25 years. That's not necessarily the case depending on the wind. I would say that metal would be closer to 35 to 40 years if it's installed properly. So another additional 15 years, I'd say. Yeah. Do we have a cost for the breezeway? Yes, the breezeway cost was $42,000. So we're looking at that. So maybe somebody will donate some and, money. <laughs> and I don't want any misconceptions about the, uh, so the drawing that you're seeing up here on the screen right now, that is a new rendering <coughs> with uh, a, lot of, a lot of things taken out, uh, which includes that conference room. Uh, this is the side entrance. So to the right will be the, uh, the parking lot. So if you look up front on the left, that is where that uh, conference room was. Can you go into the slides of the old rendering? Because I noticed, Ms. Fawcett, you had some looks on your face. Okay, so this is a picture of the original rendering of the building. Uh, if you can see the metal red up front, that's mm -hmm. where the conference room was. Mm -hmm. And then it went down to the breezeway and at the far end, was the little, I guess I call it a portico, whatever, that connected the two buildings together. So when we put in for the CBDG grant, we put in there that we were gonna have a breezeway. It, it concerns me a little bit that uh, we might not have that breezeway and we decided as a team to take it out for a cost savings. But um, I put it in my uh, capital expense to go ahead and add that in there. And we discussed this as a team. It might be something we wanted to add, go ahead and add it now and include it like uh, Mr. Gaines had stated. Uh, just because I think that's very important. That was something that we brought to the attention and our seniors brought to the attention of us. How am I gonna get back and forth? And they could walk when it's uncovered, what? Four or five months out of the year. I say I get complaints <coughs> about this out here. <coughs> You know, we, we've been through I, that for three or four years, haven't we? Yeah. And, I, and I, totally, I totally agree with that, too. But, you know, that just is one of my concerns is that we don't have it in there, the negativity that we're going to get back because the first renderings does show it. And when we did everything with the CBDG and discussed it with our seniors and we did our uh, public comment there, you know, it was there and we said we were going to have a breezeway. So, you know, Commissioner Gaines did bring that up about whether we added in now. Or, and I know you said later, you know, do I know it's going to be used 100% of the time mm -hmm. by everyone there? No, I don't. But uh, it's just it's just a worry for me um, that we might have to add it later or we could go in, like we said, and, and add it now. Well, let me think, add another discussion. I'm sorry. You know, I think, as Commissioner Gaines said, Commissioner Foster has said, obviously, with us looking at having to come up with some financing options anyway, and we're looking at $500,000 because uh, it's not something you can vote down because you don't get the $750,000. So that, and that's not out there forever because that's got a time frame associated to it. So we've got to do something with that. And as we've talked about, you know, borrowing is obviously an option. Uh, and if we borrow and do these two other projects, I don't have a problem with that. Or, and if we were gonna do that, I would add the furniture into that as well. Because you can't have a building with nothing in it. Otherwise, you've just got a building. So I would add that I would, I would say that we need to consider that a way. And we don't have to do that obviously now, but that furniture piece of it, we can do that when we consider the borrowing or if we're lucky enough to sell some of this property that we've had for years and years and years and years and years and years that's not any value to the county, we might not have to borrow. We might have money on hand at that particular time. But I think we look at all the aspects of every bit of that, especially when we get to that, as you say, borrowing phase, and we're not going to be there for 12 months or longer, however long it takes to build this facility. Some of the other, to just information for discussion, so two other um, items that were discussed when we were valuing this down. CBG um, only allows us to go over 10% of the total project value from the beginning. Um, we are at 
nine, 9.8% nine of that overage at this negotiation, nine point what? Four, four. Nine point four, four, I was over. Uh, so we're 9.44 at the negotiated cost. So taking the roof out and taking the breezeway out was also calculated into not going over 10%, having to go back to DCA. I, I don't know what that process is. I have no idea what that value is, how long that process takes. I also want to address timing. Um, Mr. Chairman just, just hit on this. We have to have that building fully functional October the 10th of next year. Our contractor's telling us it's going to take him nine to 10 months to build it. So we back into that, we need to, we need to be starting okay. tomorrow, correct. Um, and, and not tomorrow, we do have time to yep. refrain this forward to the board um, in, as standard procedures. We don't have to have that answer now. So that, those, all, those were all discussions that happened um, and, and could be added. We even talked about uh, a different type of uh, breezeway between the two, similar to what the schools use to cover their <coughs> sidewalks and connect to those. So we've looked at a bunch of different options for breezeways. So there, easy, there even is a cheaper breezeway option than, than what's proposed here with the, the block and the, the rock and the timber. Yeah, uh, James actually, Talbert went up to the school and if you look at the new <coughs> Career Academy, you know, they have a breezeway that goes all the way down, crosses mm -hmm. in front, and uh, that was a price of about $35,000. James found out how much it was per square foot, and that's a nice looking breezeway. Uh, is it similar to the one we have up here, James, or it totally is. different? So it's a little nicer. A little nicer. <laughs> but I wouldn't way. stick to that $34,000 yeah, that we, comes we, and goes. We know that, yeah. <laughs> so that's the day's that. price. Yesterday's. Yesterday's <laughs> price, yes, ma'am. Should have been here yet. Well, I get to mention this question. I know we got the time frame, and you know, we're talking about the 10% here, and we're at 9.44 <coughs> now, and I'm sure I don't want to deal with DCA because changing DCA is probably 30, 45 days. You find out anything if you're lucky enough to find it out in 30 to 45 days. Mm -hmm. uh, Could be. It, depending on, I don't know how, how much complication that's going to be. So, if we add in the breezeway and we add in, we went back to the metal roof, would that put us over 10%? Mm -hmm. Yes. So we can't do that right now. So we would need not. So which one, one could we do? Could we do, do the metal roof and not the breezeway? Two million eighty-nine thousand was eleven point six five. Just add eighty-nine thousand more. Right. So we could do. So if, one or if, the other. if that one nine six nine went to two million eighty nine thousand, that's at eleven point five five percent. We can't be there. Right. So you can't so be what more than 10, ten. What would that number be at ten percent? You know? sure. I hadn't really. We can run that calculation okay. before yeah. our next meeting. Okay. My, my advice would be, my recommendation would be, if if it's, if it's this board's desire to have both, that we include the metal roof in this contract. We close out the CDBG grant. And if, then we can then we can do the breeze way. Absolutely, yeah. You want to put the so, roof on top of another one. Correct. Right. That's that's my advice. We need to make sure that to falls in that 0.56 percent that we have left. <laughs> but is that a valid thing for us to look at? Talbert, that's a question for you. I mean, if, if we could spend, if we had the flexibility of spending the extra 50 grand, is that good value for what we're getting versus the asphalt shingle? <coughs> It's a tough question because I understand that the seniors need the breezeway as well, you know, with the with the with the I'm not saying we won't do the breezeway later, but correct. outside of the scope of this. I mean, is the just talking about the roof itself. Well, <coughs> I obviously wanted a metal roof all along and a metal roof's gonna last longer. I'd feel better about it. It's just an option of what y'all choose to do, breezeway or metal roof. For me personally, metal roof, but Don may feel a difference in it's her building, so well, I, I think we can get the, the breezeway built in outside of this scope afterwards well not at i mean outside of yeah of the contract yeah we'll get it done before out. you open but outside of the contract I, we are fine with that after you <coughs> close out the grant right instead all the and i think it's obvious that we're just going to outlast the sheen i mean that's pretty and it'll go along with everything else there that is at, I'm, I'm assuming mm -hmm. the pavilion probably matt will have a metal roof or Camille pavilion will probably have a metal roof Yes, ma'am. And it so is. it'll go along with everything else that's been constructed there and redone recently. This one's got a shingle. How old is that shingle? 
change? Uh, I'm sure it's been there. Uh, we haven't changed that roof on the current 25 years. 25 years. Um, I think it was dumb and man was here, and I think it was like 15 years ago. So it has been replaced? Yeah. Okay. But when we get ready to replace it, we could match it up with the metal roof. Absolutely. Absolutely. Any other questions for the team? You know, sometimes it is smarter if we can to spend more money at the start Absolutely. instead of having this hanging over us, oh my goodness, in 25 years. You're right. Oh, I mean that. I don't think that's good business. Yeah, that's why I hate to take it off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right. So I'd say we work on getting the roof metal again, and then we'll deal with the other thing outside of this. We'll see if we can get in that ten percent, so we don't have to do the deal. Deal with DCA. Melissa, if my head's thinking right. Didn't, Brian, didn't we figure out, because I just remembered this, that it wasn't even $11,000 that would take us up to 9.9, .9, right? Yeah. So that tells you right there that we can't even do that. But I could go that. ahead in the morning, email Brent Allen, who is the manager of the City BG Grants up at the um, Community Affairs, and just kind of fill him out of what yeah. he says, because we'll still have time for the 19th. Because I worry about the time frame. Right. He's usually really good about responding pretty quickly. That's why I like going directly to him since he's the manager. So Eleven thousand dollars would take us to what? Nine point nine. Nine point nine. Nine point nine. So that's uh, why I think I should probably go ahead yeah, go in ahead the and morning him. and just at least reach out to him casually. Make sure it's not going to be a sixty-day process. Right, and just see what they say. And will we give them a better product? I mean, I can't mm -hmm. imagine them not going along with that, giving mm -hmm. them a better product. But, what well, I, don't have, I don't doubt that they will go along with it, but how long is it going to take them to make up their money? Right. Yeah. Well, we, we do have some time, obviously, before yeah. we're going to need roofing. Right. So we can enter into a contract and then change, do a change order if it's this board's mm -hmm. desire for the metal as we proceed. So That's I think the important takeaway is on the 19th, we need a decision to enter into a contract or not. Yeah. Right. Okay. And uh, David and I already had the conversation that the donations is in a interest bearing account so that's already going to keep growing so we i need to let them know that anyway and right. might as well just go ahead and kind of fill that's it out right. what the process is yeah see what the process is see how elongated it is it might be sent like an email <laughs> a lot of things have been just an email so hopefully <laughs> it makes sense it's not even have you worked with this diversified people before? Have not. We did do extensive uh, reference checks. Um, uh, we did get both back that they do they do a good product. Um, we did get uh, one negative reference, just full disclosure. Um, and, and the negative side of it was that it took too long. They did a good product. It just took too long. We've stressed to them that timing is of the essence. This absolutely cannot take too long because the effect is $750,000. Did Carol Daniel build the school? They did. They yeah. do a lot. You they build everything. They're big. Yeah. You yeah. said we had October 10th. October the 10th. If we pass this on September 19th, we're going to have a little over a year. That's correct. 12 months and 10 days. And they're very days. well aware of that. They have been stressed over a number at that time. Of is that, that is there penalties in their contract? Yes. Oh, yeah. That will we'll cover damages. Is Five hundred dollars a day. It's not going to cover the the total seven hundred fifty thousand if for some reason that we were outside of that. So the way the CDBG grant process works, once we get to a point we realize we may need an extension, then we have to ask CDBG at that point. We can't ask them now. No. What we have to do is we have to take to them and we say, tried. hey, we've had 30 rain days, we've had this, this, and this. We need an extension. So it does us no good to go ask now. No. No. And, no. And internally, our team has already addressed that. And, and Brian is going to be our project manager on this, so we're taking, you know, keeping daily logs. So if we have to have that, we'll take the data necessary to that. Uh, so in reference to this, do we have it great? Is it done? Is it's very it ready to go? The pad will be ready when the contract gets started. Yeah. If we pass this on the 19, what day is he going to stop? 20. 20. Right. <laughs> October 1st. <laughs> Got to have the insurances and the far lines. <laughs> yeah. Right, All right, so we do have 12 months and 10 days. I was right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
Next up, we have presentation 2019 County Surplus List. Fleet Service Director Shannon Harbor. Shannon. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. I believe I have a little easier agenda item here. Thank you. Can y'all get us some money? Can we get $100,000? <laughs> That's our goal is to bring money in with this, yes. There we go, Val. We'll get the money. Get it from Shannon to sell a lot. I'll loan you some. He's got an ice maker and a Billy Gun blower. <laughs> <laughs> There's several items on the list that I supplied supply to you guys. It goes anywhere from vehicles and equipment to bleachers to cardiac defibrillators. Um, we're, I'm planning to have this sale in October. We'll advertise through all of our legal organs to try to, and uh, through our social media to let all of our citizens know so they'll have a chance to bid on their equipment. And. Um, and we plan on having this sale in our October. And I did notice that there was two items that I overlooked on this list. I want to go ahead and mention. I'll get you an updated list. The remainder of the Dollar General building still that was here at this site. We want to get rid of that. And the AC units from the Sheriff's Office. Is there value in those AC units? Well, that is one of the other things that I wanted to discuss. <laughs> if we, we, we will put them on gov deals, stuff that you think would not sell on gov deals. <coughs> has sold, but if things that don't, I would like to go ahead and ask for permission to either sell that for scrap metal or take it to the transfer station for disposal, mm -hmm. whichever is more appropriate. Okay. And <coughs> as staff, I'd like to recommend that the board approve this list for disposal with a couple items added uh, on gov deals and to dispose of the non sale items for either through scrap or trash. Questions for Shannon? So we have a 2014 five-year-old Dodge Charger with 100,000 miles. The engine blew up. It's yes. Well, it's, it's go around number two. It's actually had an engine already. The the lifters they had a bad run of lifters. They fail when you repair it. They usually fail again, which is the case on this one. And it has a couple other wiring issues and things. It's just more to repair it than it's worth. Wow. Uh, tell me what is a highway? I know it's not a street. Uh, a uh, which one? Yeah, you got two of them. Uh, the two highways, the E2020 XTs, were the old salt spreaders that was used on okay. the road department. And the other one is a It is used on the highway. Yes. All right. <laughs> I thought, well, i got to ask what that is. <coughs> Question, other questions for Shannon? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have discussion of Association of County Commissioners of Georgia 2019 Legislative Leadership <coughs> Conference voting. Dell received a letter from ACCG wanting to know who's going to be our voting delegate. You have a copy of that letter from Mr. Dave Wills. Uh, I asked Kristen, I said, Kristen, is anybody going to this here leadership meeting? That's already signed up. It's on this board. Well, the only person going is Commissioner Satterfield. So my recommendation to you is that he be on the board. I think I got changed the plan. <laughs> Too late. So my recommendation to you would be him, since he's the only one going. Well, and, and I also recommend that we move that to the voting session at 6 o'clock because this has to be in by the 13th so that Chris can fill out that form and send it in, given him the authority to vote. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is getting his plaque, so he has a reason to go down there. Okay, that's good. So, for his commission. That's what happens when you have a train. All right. Anybody got any questions about that or want to volunteer to be the representative? I'm riding that. All right. I'm riding right with me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, County Manager report. Uh, thank you, Chairman and Commissioners. Good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to remind you of the annual Patriot Day service. This year's event will be hosted by the Sheriff's Office. It will begin at 8.30 a.m. <coughs> September the 11th at the Sheriff's Office. Um, it's nearly time for our annual shore sweep. Uh, as you know, this event brings together uh, many of our county organizations and departments who, uh, to capture and discard debris around the shorelines of the War Hill Park area. Uh, this year's shore sweep is coming up on Saturday, September the 14th, and will be held from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, we're, we're proud to announce that uh, we will host a groundbreaking for the new fire station eight. 
to be located on Sweetwater Juno Road. And that, uh, we, of course, invite the board and, and the public to, uh, to this event, which will begin at 2 p.m. Tuesday, September the 17th. And then finally, I'd like to introduce the uh, newest member to our Parks and Recreation staff, uh, Caleb Randolph, if you stand for a second, Caleb, uh, is the Sports Programs Manager. Uh, he is in his uh, third week on the job and has gotten off to a great start in helping organize our fall sports, including baseball, softball, soccer, and football. Caleb holds a sports management degree from the University of Minnesota and has previously worked with Forsyth County Parks and Rec as well as the uh, Gwinnett Strikers. That concludes my report. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Questions of the county manager? County attorney. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I do not have a public report tonight, but I do have some executive session items. And that would be under what category? Um, all <coughs> litigation or potential or threatened litigation. Litigation. Okay, with that, I'll take a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Gaines. Second. Second by Commissioner Satterfield. Discussion. Hearing none, please vote. And that's approved 4 0. It'll take about five minutes and then we will meet in the executive session. Thank you for your attendance. You're welcome to come back at 6 o'clock for our vote.